So we're live at Adobe Max 2017. We're here at the Dell FMC campus. We've got free sessions happening, hands-on classes happening right over here. So come on in and take a seat at one of our Dell Precision workstations. We've got an awesome perimeter of uh, new stuff that Dell is showing off to you folks. And uh, we've got some amazing speakers over here as well at the Ask the Expert station. Some, um, obviously we're here with Future Media Concepts and Dell. We're offering great training. Um, with some fabulous master instructors. Without further ado, I want to introduce to you Mr. Richard Harrington. So uh, thank you guys for coming out. Those of you who are here live at the event, as well as those of you watching live online or watching the replay. We're going to be talking about a very cool feature that's inside of After Effects and Premiere Pro, and that's the ability to stabilize our footage. Now, a lot of times you shoot video handheld, and it might be shakier than you want. I'm gonna show you how you can remove the shake or keep the shake and smooth it out or even take the shake and apply it to other elements like graphics so they move with the scene itself. Now, you guys who are here live can actually follow along. On the desktop, there's a folder called Harrington and if you open that up, there's a folder in there called Fixing Shaky Footage. Just open that up and open up the project that says working with the warp stabilizer. So that's just on the desktop, Harrington, fixing shaky footage and open up the project. Now you might get an error message or two. This is a project that's been open on a Mac, open on a PC. Every time you switch platforms, Adobe flags it for you. And there's one shot that it might throw up an error dialog box on. Just click OK, not a big deal. And let's jump in here and I'll show you what we're going to be doing. So in this first folder, folder 1.0, I've got two shots that have problems. The first shot is a really busy shot, handheld footage panning around, and the second is just a locked off shot. Let's select both of those shots, control A, and I'm gonna bring up a panel to make things easier. So under the window menu, you can choose the tracker panel, and there's an, a, a button here for just warp stabilizer. Now, when you apply the warp stabilizer, it's just right there in the tracker panel, warp stabilizer. Just select your clips, then click it. This is the same effect that's in Premiere Pro. However, in After Effects, we call it the warp stabilizer VFX, because it has an extra category of effects specifically for things like titles or filters. For example, we can use the clone tool in After Effects and actually have the clone move with the shaking camera. So it's kind of cool like that. Now what happens when you apply this is the first thing it's going to do is it's going to analyze. And so you can track that progress over here in the upper left corner. You can see that it's analyzing the shot. Now while that's happening, there's a couple things I want to put out there about how the warp stabilizer works. So essentially, the warp stabilizer has four methods. One method, and you'll see this here under the method menu, is position. It just moves the shot up, down, left and right to stabilize. That's fine if your camera was just sort of rocking back and forth. Maybe it was on a tripod, but on a dock that had subtle movement. Now the next method, position, scale and rotation, will rotate the shot as needed and scale it up to fill the frame. So if your camera person is riding, maybe on a motorcycle or a moving vehicle, and it's moving in and out a little bit, this will compensate for that and remove that Z position shake. The perspective method is trickier, and it tilts the image forward or backwards as needed. The last one, subspace warp, I'll let you in on the biggest secret. It's cool, but I almost never use it because it's overdone it actually bends the image and starts to move it around like silly putty to try to stabilize. And if you get too aggressive with that, it can look very fake. So we'll use it some of the time, but it's not that necessary because it can be too aggressive with the footage. All right, so on this second shot here, this is supposed to be a locked off shot, but it was handheld. What I can do is simply double click so that shot's there, it's selected, it's active, so I'll just highlight it. And if you look here at the warp stabilizer in the composition panel, I'll set this to position, scale and rotation and tell it to have no motion. 
once you do that, it becomes a totally locked off, completely solid shot. There is no problem with the stability. It looks like you shot on a tripod. So this effect is really cool. It is also available in Premiere Pro. So here's that first shot, and we'll switch to another example here in just a second. This first shot has got a lot of motion on it. So instead of no motion, I'm gonna say smooth motion. And it starts to smooth out the whip pan. Now, subspace warp worked pretty well, but I'm gonna try perspective, so it's a little gentler. And here's something most people don't think about. You look at the smoothness and it stops at 100. One would logically assume that 100 was the maximum value. It's not. You can click on the text here and keep going all the way up to 1,000. But the more you smooth, the more it has to blow up the image to stabilize. So if 100's not enough, you can bump that up to 150 or 200 and get a smoother shot. In this particular case, this looks a lot better using the perspective method at about 150 to 200. Now that handheld whip pan doesn't look so bumpy and it just looks like a smooth pan that tracks the action. Not a tourist holding a DSLR camera with no monopod and no tripod. Okay? All right, let's go to another example. I'm gonna go window and make sure that I have my project panel up. You could just do that by pressing control zero as a shortcut, by the way. And we're gonna talk about the different methods. So here's 2.1. And on this one, if you just press the space bar for 2.1, you'll see that we've got a dolly shot. Now I've already applied the warp stabilizer. You can double click on it. And if you click on the little FX, it turns the effect off. So you can see what's happening here is as the camera slides on the dolly, it was a little bumpy. That's because it was a skateboard dolly, which is some PVC pipe. You know, we were in this low budget music video. We didn't have big heavy duty dolly tracks, so there was a little bit of bumps. Well, if I turn that on and just say, give that smooth motion and smooth out the position, let's bump that up to about 200. Now, the dolly shot is just butter. It just looks perfectly smooth, and any little bump or shimmy in the dolly track is taken away. So you guys can easily tweak that and get super stability. So that works pretty well. Paul, I don't know if you're comfortable. I think she might need a help. Uh, but this allows you to remove any shakes or bumps. So as you can see there, as you smooth that out, it looks like a great dolly shot, okay? Now, let's go back to the project panel, control zero, and I'm gonna open up 2.2. This is the position, scale, and rotation method. And this one's tough. In this case, this is actually shot here in Las Vegas. There's a fun place called Dig This where they'll let you drive bulldozers and backhoes. It's a fun social activity, you can go there. Uh, what happens is the bouncing treads are throwing off the camera track. It's got a high detail area that's shaking up and down. And that has nothing to do with the shake of the camera. If you've got something like a burned in logo bug from network TV or something that's shaking in the wind and it's throwing off it, we can totally cheat. So what I mean by that is I can take my pen tool and simply click to mask out that object. Now to do that, just make sure the layer itself is active and you click and it makes a mask on the layer. And I can twirl that down and look at the mask and I'll set it to subtract. So by subtracting the mask, that part of the video is gonna disappear. So now we have a hole in our video. There's a big black hole where the shake used to be. 
I can tell this to choose layer, pre-compose. Now, pre-composition is something a lot of folks don't understand. It's kind of like when you go on vacation and you have to pack up your toiletry bag. You probably learned the hard way that you want to put your toothpaste and toothbrush in a bag because if you just throw that in your suitcase, you're going to open up and have toothpaste all over your clothing. So you put little bags inside of bigger bags and you keep going until you get on the airplane. So a pre-composition is just that. We're going to take one part of our project and put it into a container. So by choosing layer pre-compose, I can choose the second option here of move everything into the pre-comp. So now that mask and that footage is inside the pre-comp. We can now say warp stabilizer and I'll tell it to do the position scale and rotation and crank that up a little bit. And when it's all done, we're gonna have a non-shaky shot. The shake is gonna disappear and it's not gonna get thrown off because this hole is missing. Now, you're probably thinking that's great. Oh, that does look a lot better, but there's this problem, the big black hole in my video. Once the warp stabilizer is done, it doesn't change anything unless you click reanalyze. So you can just double click inside of here and select your mask, M will show you the mask, and just delete it. And now when you go back out, everything's gonna be fine. It's gonna be totally solid. So once you get back out of there, there's no problem with the stability. Now the shot is totally stable, even though part of it's shaking. So the logic here is sometimes you wanna use pre-comps to solve problems. All right, let's do another one here that's gonna be really useful. This one is like the ultimate in shaky footage. And I'm gonna explain why. So what we have here is a swaying bridge in Costa Rica, okay? Now on top of this swaying bridge, we also have a person walking with the camera. So shaky bridge and walking. This is a perfect time to use subspace warp because this is really unstable. So with subspace warp, you can take advantage of stabilizing and cropping subspace warp and just turn this up. And now it's going to give you significantly smoother results. The other thing is After Effects added a brand new filter. They put in a filter called Remove Camera Shake. So if you've got blurry footage caused by a shaking camera, it can actually sample frames from before and after the blur and make your video more in focus. So that's just under the effects menu and you can go down to the option here for blur and sharpen and choose camera shake deblur. And it will actually go through and make blurry video clearer if there's vibration in the camera. It's a little slow to use because it's pretty intense, but it will clean up your footage immensely. Now the shaky video looks a lot better and the blurry areas have been made crisp because it actually steals from frames in front and in back. And if it sees soft areas, it just blends the pixels back in and makes it clear again. So it's pretty amazing. That just came out uh, about three months ago. All right, let's go back to the project panel and do an easy example here. I wanna show you something that's a lot of fun. And this is the ability to actually fix some things. I'm gonna show you an example of a drone. I don't know if any of you guys fly drones, but drones are very prevalent to a little bit of shake and vibration. Why? Because you're hanging a lightweight camera on an object with four spinning propellers. So it naturally is gonna shake a little bit, especially if it's windy. So what we can do is we can fix this. So you'll see here on the right, the original footage, it's gonna play in real time here in a second. And on the left, I chose an option called preserve scale. So what that does 
is it tries very hard to keep everything the exact same size as it's stabilized. So look at how the drone footage just looks so much smoother. How there's none of the shake or the bumps. So it just totally smooths that out for aerial footage. So what you can do with that, if you look at it, is all it is is an option under Warp Stabilizer and you check the box here labeled Preserve Scale. It's usually off by default and it's perfect if you've got shaky, bumpy footage. It will make sure that as the camera moves in and out vibrating, that the objects now scale the opposite direction so it doesn't look even more shaky. It's a really cool option here, especially for aerial footage or if someone's doing walking footage. So it smooths out those bumps. All right, we got time for another couple of examples. And uh, what I want to show you here is how we can put something onto the text. So in folder three, we've got an image here called match start. It's inside folder three, then six, match start. And I want to show you how we can do some pretty cool things here. So first up, we can take a filter and have it match the movement of our footage. So if there's movement in the scene, we can totally use that. So watch, I'll apply the warp stabilizer to this clip, but there's a very important option that you have to turn on. At the bottom of the warp stabilizer, I'm gonna tell it the intent. So my objective is not to stabilize anymore. This is under the advanced section at the bottom if you have to twirl that open. Little secret about After Effects, all the cool stuff is always hidden under a menu labeled advanced. Because they take the really complex stuff and tuck it away, because the After Effects team is tired of always being told that the tool's too hard to use. So here we can change the objective to reversible stabilization. This means that we want to take all the shake and the bumps of the camera and apply it to some other filters. So now I've got reversible stabilization. And watch what we can do. We can toss on something classic. We'll go all the way back here under the generate menu and I'll choose to add a lens flare. So effect, generate, lens flare. Let's put that lens flare right on one of these pegs here. There we go. We can adjust the brightness a little bit and the flare type. There we go. So we got a nice little hit. Tone that down. Now, once you guys have done that, the cool part is you just grab the warp stabilizer and you say, edit, duplicate, and just drag that to the bottom. Now, once you have the exact same warp stabilizer applied, you change the objective from reversible to reverse. So I'll do that whole thing again from start to finish here in one second. But what's happening is, is you're making a warp stabilizer sandwich. The bottom piece of bread is set to reversible. So it goes through and it analyzes the camera shake and the movement. Then you toss on the effects and the seasoning. After that, you put the another one on and you tell it to reverse. And it takes everything and tightens it up and now the effect is gonna move with the camera shake. So any shake you had or subtle movement in the frame suddenly gets applied to the filter and it will match the movement, which is really kind of cool. We can also do other effects. So I'll do this from the top. Let's toss on the warp stabilizer. And again, under advanced, I'll choose reversible as my objective. I just need to do the detailed analysis to see that. So if you run this the first time, you just check the box for detailed analysis. It can't do this advanced option unless you let it do the slower analysis where it really thinks through the footage. Once that's done, 
we can then set the objective to reversible. Now, while that's going, I can double click on the footage and I can actually take advantage of the clone stamp tool here in After Effects. It's just like the clone stamp tool in Photoshop. So you can use your brushes and the size of your brushes here. Let's just get that a little bigger. And I'll hold down the Alt key to set the sample point and I'll brush. There we go. And this can be useful to take out a problem area. Let me just do that again. Alt click to set the source point and clone. Alt click to set the source point and a little bit of cloning. It's just like Photoshop's clone stamp tool. So that works really well to remove something. Then grab that warp stabilizer VFX after we told this to be reversible, duplicate it, just select it and say edit duplicate. There it is. We'll toss that down at the bottom and I just switch it to reverse stabilization. So let's fix that clone really quick since I put that on after we had done the reversible. Here it is. Alt click, and I just paint that in. It's good. Now, back in our composition, it'll follow that. Now, got a little tricky there. Let's just make sure we did it. Oh, I see the problem. The paint effect wasn't in the middle of our sandwich. There we go. So I put it back in the middle, and it should work. Let's just double check that. Reverse, yep. Double click to open. Alt click and paint. Sometimes the order in which one builds a sandwich matters. Let it save real quick. There we go. So now, as the camera moves, the clone moves with it. And if you ever had to do this frame by frame by frame, you probably really like this recipe you just saw. Because <laughs> this is a huge time saver. It allows you to take something out like a logo on someone's shirt if they were in an interview. And then the client says, oh, we don't want to show that Nike logo. So you could just clone it out and then it'll go out, which is really kind of cool. Now, one little advanced trick, I don't want you to try to do this, but I want you to see it, and that is this. If you are seeing things that are throwing off the results, you can check a box here called Show Track Points. And this allows you to lasso around things with your selection tool that you don't want to be tracked. So I can get rid of all the points on his hand and wrist, and when I do that, now it's going to focus on just the guitar. So that's going to give me a much more accurate track. Just lasso around those. There we go. And now it's only tracking the guitar. So this makes it easier. And when I use that, put the second copy in there at the bottom. Let's hide those tracking points. There we go and we'll set that to reverse. Once you've done that, you're gonna get significantly better results as that moves around. <laughs> now it's only looking at the movement of the guitar to affect the camera shake. So technically, now we could tweak that last little bit there, but it did pretty darn well. All right, there's another thing we can do open up the one called match insert from the same folder. And in this case, we can take the text and apply it to the camera shake. So this is sometimes called integrated typography. And what it does is it allows you to take a logo or a title and put it into the video. And as there's movement in the scene, the title kind of moves with the camera and bounces. 
So this is really cool because like you can do a walkthrough, say here at Adobe Max, walking down the aisle and attach the text to all of the things. And then as it goes past, the text would move past. So let's just select the footage layer. And I've already got the warp stabilizer applied for you so you don't have to rerun it. And under the advanced section, we're gonna tell it that we want it to apply motion to a target over the original. This means take the shake of this layer and put it on this layer and then mix the two together. Additionally, if you ever needed to do those cool, shaky, organic titles, rather than having to keyframe all of that, you could just take out your smartphone, point it at a wall or something that's got a lot of items or a couple of pins on the bulletin board and just d -d 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 shake your phone and then track that and toss those keyframes onto the title layer by saying apply motion to target. So take out the music that you're gonna use into the open and just use your smartphone to do the big camera moves around a bulletin board that has pins in it and then apply that to your titles and it'll match the movement and give you cool motion. All right, so we said apply motion to target. I choose the layer that I want, that's great. And we just make sure we say what to use. And once we've done that, now as there's movement here, it's gonna match the movement of the scene. So the integrated typography stays with the moving subject, giving you the ability to have cool titles that are mixed into your footage. So this is a really useful effect. Now all the stuff we covered up top in sections one and two about using the warp stabilizer, all of that stuff is built into Premiere Pro. So if you need to fix a shaky shot, you need to you know, make sure that the shot doesn't feel like it's moving around too much or that the camera was bumped, all that you can do right in Premiere Pro. If you need to do the advanced stuff where you wanna see the points and delete them, or you wanna actually attach text or have a paint effect or another filter react to your footage, then just jump over to After Effects. And remember, After Effects is just a right click away. We can right click on our footage in Premiere Pro and say replace with After Effects comp. After Effects will launch, do whatever you need to, close and save, and it drops right back into Premiere Pro ready to use. All right, so this is that great warp stabilizer effect. It's been around for a good while, but there's a lot of things in there that people don't know how to do. And again, that best piece of advice I can give you is use the warp stabilizer option very sparingly. I always start with perspective and then work my way down the list because less aggressive is usually gonna give you more natural results. Well, for those of you who are joining us here at Adobe Max Live, thank you for coming to the booth. We will be having presentations all day. And for those of you who are watching the live stream or the replay, thanks for watching. I'm an instructor for Future Media Concepts. My name's Rich Harrington, and we've been coming to you live from Adobe Max here at the Dell campus. Thanks again.